Functional gas intensity disorders are defined the variable combination of chronic and uh, recurrent gas intensity symptoms, uh, not explained by structural uh, or biochemical abnormalities. We include uh, uh, syndrome, cyclic vomit syndrome, rumination, and uh, areophagia, and uh, uh, abdominal pain related to functional gas intensity disorder as uh, functional dyspepsia, irritable bowel syndrome, abdominal migraine and functional abdominal pain. And, and the last, also functional constipation and non-retentive fecal incontinence. This condition is uh, very frequently in uh, pediatric population, but also in uh, adult population, and uh, uh, are frequently misdiagnosed in children, and uh, they are associated with uh, morbidity and uh, high health care cost. In, uh, in fact, uh, uh, also uh, 15 uh, of pediatric gastrointestinal consultation are about uh, functional gastrointestinal disorder, and uh, between 2 to 4 percent of gener general pediatric consultation is about abdominal pain on the functional dyspepsia. The quality of life in these patients, but also in family, is uh, worse than in a uh, population with asthma or other mm, ch chronic condition with asthma and, and migraine. The most important condition is uh, chronic abdominal pain in the functional gastrointestinal disorders or recurrent abdominal pain. When uh, you speak about uh, uh, chronic abdominal pain, now we consider that this model where uh, uh, the uh, symptoms are the uh, results about abnor psychosocial abnormality, abnormality of uh, intestinal motility and uh, sensitive motility, and the, the final result is visceral hyperalgesia. That is considered the most important mechanism in, uh, in this condition. In many patients, uh, you can see symptoms ab about abdominal pain or about irritable bowel syndrome after gastroenteritis, acute gastroenteritis. In fact, uh, in, uh, uh, there is a prevalence of, uh, of irritable bowel syndrome in uh, 7 uh, 30 percent of, of patients uh, after Salmonella or Campylobacter gastroenteritis. Risk factor for uh, irritable bowel syndrome is. Uh, protective diarrhea, absence of vomiting, younger age, famous sex, and previous stressful events. So we can see uh, symptoms in these patients after, after gastroenteritis. If we consider gut flora modification that we call uh, dysbiosis, um, it, this is a condition very, very important in irritable bowel syndrome. And uh, why it's important? Because gut flora uh, forms a barrier against the pathogen, stimulates host immune system, innate and adaptive uh, immunity intestinal system, limits the adhesion of bacteria in epithelium, controls uh, proliferation of epithelial cells. This uh, uh, function is very important, but uh, the most important function is immune function, stimulate protective T cell response, uh, uh, or T cell regulatory T cells, and uh, dampening of inflammatory response. And uh, in a condition with stress, uh, there is a qualitative and quantitative change in gut flora, and uh, this condition is, uh, has been described in irritable bowel syndrome. In irritable uh, bowel syndrome also was demonstrated that uh, culture bus technique, uh, there is a lower percent of lactobacillus species and the bifidobacterium species. There is a prevalence of anaerobic species. And in the area ABS, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, there is a, a lower prevalence of lactobacillus. This condition was demonstrated in irritable bowel syndrome in adult population. If we want to uh, consider the possible treatment, there are a lot of, uh, um, of drugs, but uh, for pediatric population, this drug is, uh, there, are, there aren't trials for this drug. The probiotics is seem a natural uh, choice, uh, potential therapeutic agents in this, in this condition, because in, in, in a lot of uh, gastrointestinal condition, there is a Cochrane that uh, reveal uh, 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 efficacy of probiotic use, for example, in infective diarrhea. In uh, irritable bowel syndrome, probiotic uh, 
can uh, may be efficacious about uh, to control the inflammation or, the, or infection in, this, in these patients. Why you can use uh, lactobacillus reuteri for uh, supplementation in these patients? Because uh, it's an autochthon strain of lactobacillus, because uh, it's effective antimicrobic action. Um, this uh, strain uh, survival and the colonization of gastrointestinal tract and uh, the immune function of uh, lactobacillus reuteri, it was uh, demonstrated. I present here the preliminary study about uh, case control study of lactobacillus reuteri in pediatric functional abdominal pain and uh, 17 patients uh, between 6 and uh, 12 uh, years uh, was included about uh, um, symptom that we could consider uh, chronic abdominal pain in according to ROM3 criteria, criteria for functional gastrointestinal disorder in children and uh, with uh, exclusion of uh, organic uh, condition uh, and also familiarity for peptic disease and inflammatory bowel disease. This is the, the design of the study with recruitment and supplementation of these patients with lactobacillus ready for four weeks. Uh, first control after six weeks uh, stop supplementation. Uh, second control after three months and uh, the last control after six months with follow-up is what uh, for six months. Uh, after three months, uh, we can see that uh, in a uh, reutering group uh, versus a placebo group, uh, there is a significant reduction about the frequency and the intensity of uh, the abdominal pain. And the results of this case control, preliminary case control study, was that in the overall study population, treatment with reutering compared to case control reduced frequency and intensity of abdominal pain. This uh, result uh, is very significant I is after three months of, uh, of follow-up. Last year, we uh, performed another study about these uh, random, randomized placebo-controlled trials or RCT on uh, efficacy of lactobacillus reuteri in pediatric functional abdominal pain. This study, patients were randomized to receive lactobacillus reuteri uh, in uh, or matching placebo orally for four weeks. This uh, was the sign of the study. T0 recruitment at the beginning of the supplementation for four weeks. The first control at, uh, after four weeks with stop supplementation. And the second control after uh, eight weeks uh, with uh, clinical condition. The outcome, uh, primary outcome of this study was uh, treatment success defined as a reduced pain at the end of the intervention. The secondary outcome was a change of uh, uh, at least two phase of, uh, about intensity of the, of the uh, pain. This was the patients at, uh, at recruitment. And uh, the results, uh, you can see about the intensity of the pain, there is a significant results after four weeks at the end of the supplementation and also after eight weeks uh, of follow-up. But there is a not a real significant difference about, about the frequency uh, of the abdominal pain after four weeks and after eight weeks. The conclusion of this study was that the supplementation with lactobacillus reuteri in children with recurrent abdominal pain led to a significant reduction of intensity of the symptoms. And it's important uh, that the benefit seems to persist after the cessation of the therapy, after also after four weeks uh, the cessation of therapy. Probiotic was well tolerated and uh, non adverse uh, events uh, occurred. And the mod modulation of the gut flora, uh, we think that it can become an, an attractive treatment option in this condition where we have seen that there isn't a, a therapy for, uh, pediatric, for pediatric population.